Some time ago I posted a video on the Hasselblad X1D and the X1D Mark II. So that's the Mark II here and I put them side by side, I compared them, I brought recommendations for people who are interested to become medium format shooters in the Hasselblad compact system. And yes, this is a medium format compact camera. It's very good in hand. I like shooting with that camera a lot. And uh, in this video I want to provide a few more data points on the Hasselblad X1D Mark II by looking into a very special adapter. And this is the adapter, it's from a brand called Cambo, is widely known under architectural photographers because they provide professional view cameras for digital bags from phase one, for instance, and uh, provide in this way access with shift lenses to the most professional and most expensive sensors the photography world has to offer, like digital bags from phase one or Hasselblad in their highest lineup. And this adapter can be used to mount Canon EF lenses on the Hasselblad X1D. EF lenses from Canon, which are interesting for that, are their tilt shift lenses. Here is the Canon tilt shift lens 24 mm f3.5. And that's a typical lens people use in architectural photography and uh, also for landscape, of course, if they want to shift up to the horizon a bit more. For instance, if you want to go for night sky photography. And uh, the reason why these lenses can be used on a sensor which is much bigger than the sensor these lenses are calculated for, I'm going to explain in a moment. Let's kick off the video. So let's have a look at the adapter first and the adapter comes shipped in a small box. It's from the Actus View camera system. Here is the brand Cambo. I mentioned this in the intro to the video. It's made in the Netherlands and uh, this is the lens control adapter for Canon EF lenses. So first of all, what does it mean to have a lens control adapter? And the reason is that Canon lenses steer the aperture electronically via the camera body. And here is the um, 17 millimeter tilt shift lens and that's the 24 millimeter tilt shift lens. And they are both excellent in image quality. My personal impression always is that the 24 millimeter is a tiny little bit sharper, but they are both good lenses. And you have no mean to control the aperture on Canon EF lenses on the lens itself. It's electronically steered by the camera body. And that means if you switch to a certain aperture and you have mounted this on a Canon EF camera body and you dismount the lens, then the aperture will be programmed or get stuck with that last setting of the aperture. So in a simple example, if I shoot this on a Canon EF DSLR and uh, I go to an aperture of F8 and then I dismount the lens, then the aperture in that lens is programmed to be at an F8. Clearly you can also program the aperture of these lenses with Canon R bodies. So the R or the RA or the RP, or I'm currently <coughs> testing the new R5 from Canon. So the EOS R5, which is their new flagship camera in the mirrorless system. And uh, using the adapter they provide from EF lenses to R bodies, you can program the aperture here. Coming back to the adapter, let's get the lenses out of sight here for a moment. That is exactly what that adapter is solving for you. And I'm going to demonstrate this in a live shooting, of course, but there is a control wheel here, which already indicates in the icons that this is all about aperture. And if you mount the lens on the adapter and the adapter on the Hasselblad X1D or X1D Mark II, you can use that control wheel here to control the aperture. So here you're opening the aperture and here you are stopping down. And here in that little display here, it also shows you what your choice of aperture is. That's why this adapter is also more expensive than normal adapters like you would get them from Novoflex where you have very often no functionality from an electronic perspective on the lens. Here you need it because this adapter between the lens and the body is controlling the aperture and that's why it is called on the box lens control adapter. Let's see what else is in the box in the way it was shipped to me. So let's quickly open this up. First of all, the box contains another box, which we are going to look into in a moment. There is a one pager explaining how to operate the aperture controller. It's straightforward, but it's nice that they include kind of a manual here. There is some packaging material, which was used to wrap in the adapter when it was shipped to me. 
And then there is a card where Combo invites you to register and thanks you for considering their products. That's basically all. I think the more interesting part here is the box in the box. So if I open this up here, there is a power bank and this power bank has an out port and an in port. It's five volt. I think if I read this correctly here is 2000 milliampere capacity. So uh, that will charge the adapter on the move when you're on travel. And uh, my experience is that the adapter is good for up to two hours of shooting time continuously, of course, not switching it on and off. Then you can extend the operating time. But if you then need to charge it, I think it's a nice gesture from Cambo to include this power bank here into the package and enable you to mobile charge your adapter. Of course, many people have other power banks much more powerful for charging their iPhones or their iPads or what have you. And these can also be used quite nice. Then in this box, there is an instruction manual. That's the instruction manual for the power bank. Clearly, if you need to read this to understand how a power bank is operated, then you probably should not operate that camera and also not the adapter. So let's forget about that. And here is a micro USB cable, which can be used. This one goes into the adapter. This one goes into the out port on uh, this power bank here. So all pretty much straightforward. So let's turn our attention now to this adapter. Looking at the adapter from the EF side, this is the EF mount and this is where your lens mounting takes place with EF lenses. There is an eject button here. So if you want to dismount the EF lens, you have to push that button in the same way as if it would be mounted on a camera body. Going to the other side, you see here the indication that this is the XCD mount and that's the side where the adapter gets mounted onto the X1D or the X1D Mark II so that if you mount it in this way, you have this little LCD here inside, which gives you control about the aperture with that control wheel here. Around the adapter, there is nothing more to mention except for this side. So here we have a few elements. Here is a micro USB port, which is used for charging the adapter. I come to that in a moment. Here is an on off switch. You see this from this side on off. And that is the only element which I think from a build quality is not optimal. The rest of the adapter is very solidly built and has a very nice look and feel. It's all metal, looks very good, but here this on off switch is a little bit a pain, I think, and they could have done this much better, but it is what it is. There are two LEDs here for indications, and there is a set button here, which you can push to program the aperture and to set it, and that's pretty much all. But if you look at the screws, if you look at the appearance of the adapter, it's nicely made, it's solid. My only point of criticism is that on off switch, which I personally don't like because it's a bad feeling if you switch it on and off and it also appears to be a bit loose. So that is something they could improve in a second generation or another generation of that adapter here. I removed now the Hasselblad XCD30 lens here, which is one of my most favorite lenses I use on the X1D and the X1D Mark II. And let's mount the adapter. And if you look at the camera for a moment, just here inside, there is this red dot and the red dot indicates where you need to start to mount your lens. That red dot is also here on the adapter. So we know already that in this direction here, it will fit nicely and then it clicks in, in a very solid way. Listen to that. Good, perfect. This is solid. It sits firmly on the camera body. It makes the camera wider, of course, because you need to gain sight on this LCD here for the aperture control, but it looks, I think, very impressive. I want to shoot that combo with the tilt shift lens 24 millimeters. So let's mount the lens now on this adapter here. Again, we have here, let me put this aside. We have here the red dot. We have here the red dot on the lens. So I know if I match this, it will fit nicely and I can just screw it until it clicks in. And now this is very solid. It's a good and impressive combination, I think. And I can now fully operate that tilt shift lens on the Hasselblad X1D. So one point I need to mention is why are these tilt shift lens is suitable for being shot on a medium format sensor if they are calculated for full frame, which is a smaller sensor size. And the answer is that tilt shift lenses in general, not only from Canon, but also from Nikon have a larger image circle. 
and uh, they have this larger image circle because they need headroom to maneuver in your shift operations here and that makes these lenses suitable to be shut even on cameras with a larger sensor. Clearly, theoretically, you can shoot any Canon EF lens on that adapter because the mount will fit. Having said that, if the EF lens you want to use has a smaller image circle, then very likely you will see vignetting on that larger sensor size here, so you would have to crop in the middle of your frame in order to get rid of the vignetting. But theoretically, you can shoot any Canon EF lens on that Cambo adapter and on the Hasselblad X1D and the X1D Mark II. So I removed now the lens hood here and uh, I did this because I also want to give a little bit of insight into the lens what happens when we change the aperture with that aperture controller here. So let's do a dry exercise and let's switch this on. As I said, be a bit careful with that switch here. That's the weak part of the otherwise very solid construction here. So let's switch it on. You see an LED indicating that this is now switched on. And if we now look at this, we have the set button. I can push this and then it gives me the widest open aperture F 3.5. Now, if I turn the aperture wheel, I can stop down now. And let's illustratively go for an aperture of F 8.0. Now I push the set button and now there is a nice feature here because you have now programmed two aperture settings here. The first one is your f8.0, which is what I control with this wheel here. The second is, if I switch it again here on the set button, it always switches to the widest open aperture. If I push the set button again, it goes back to my choice of what I have chosen here with the aperture controller wheel. And that's very nice. So I can switch very quickly between widest open and between my programmed aperture of f8. And if you look into the lens here, let me try, let me put it down. And um, if you look into the lens here, this is now f8. And if I push the button, it opens the aperture to f3.5. If I push the button again, it stops down to my pre-programmed f8 setting. And that works with all aperture settings here. So if I would illustratively go for f5.6, I push the set button. And now I can switch between 3.5 and 5.6 and the 5.6 is stored in the electronics of this adapter here. And again, if I look into the lens, this is f5.6, this is f3.5, 5.6, 3.5. So pretty nice, good construction, I think well made and does the trick in terms of you don't need any Canon camera body to pre-program the aperture here, you can just use that adapter and it's working fine. Let's continue our dry exercise. I switched the camera on and uh, I have pre-programmed the aperture here to switching between 3.5 and 8.0 in the way I illustrated before. And let's get a less boring subject here. So this is a book from Hasselblad here and about Hasselblad, of course. It's basically the Hasselblad story. I used this as a subject in one of my videos already. And let's have a look what happens here. So here is the focus ring. I can turn the focus ring. Then you see my focus peaking nicely kicking in on the X1D Mark II. So I can easily focus here. This is not a problem at all. And um, now I can operate the shift lens, of course, and I do not intend to give an introduction to Canon TSE lenses, but uh, clearly you can shift in both directions, vertically and horizontally. You also have the tilt functionality in here. So just to illustrate this once here on these wheels, let's look into the image. And if you see this, I can now shift. And uh, if I overdo it, I might get some vignetting here in the corners, but in general, it works quite nice. It covers almost the full range of millimeters I have available for shift here. So that's pretty nice. And that's basically all I wanted to show here. So we conclude now on the dry exercise and I'm going to share my sample images. It's a fantastic experience shooting Canon EF tilt shift lenses on the X1D or the X1D Mark II because you get a 50 megapixel image with highest quality and uh, clearly you can correct for falling lines. You can get up to the horizon for night sky shooting. It's nice for architectural shots in the city and for buildings and it's just a very good combo. I highly can recommend this. Let's now look into the images.
Like in the good old times of Apple when Steve Jobs was still around and on stage, there is one more thing. And my one more thing has two quick remarks. First of all, if you mount that adapter on the X1D or the Mark II, the camera body will switch to electronic shutter. And if it doesn't for you, you can activate this in the menu. And the reason is that XCD lenses use what people call a leaf shutter. And the leaf shutter is mounted in the XCD lens. And that's of course not available on Canon lenses. That's why the only option that remains for the X1D is to use the electronic shutter. That's the first thing I want to mention. The second point I want to make is that there is no electronic contact between the adapter and the camera body. And the information what aperture has been chosen on the lens is only known to the lens itself and to the adapter. There is no channeling through of the f-stop to the camera body. So you will not see in your metadata what aperture you've chosen. And if this is of importance for you, you need to note it somewhere and need to remember. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me your thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and peace out.